Hi, sword friends! What is going on today? Why do I have so many different swords out? Well, it has to do with the weather, and it has to do with a giant cardboard box. I have decided I'm going to perform another uh, fire axe test. So, one of those tests where we just hit a target as hard as we can and see how far the sword penetrates, because that is a characteristic of swords that people are interested in, seeing exactly what they're cutting their maximum cutting capacity is. And with a, a target like cardboard, even though that's not a preferred target, if I have that much of it, and I'm going to throw it away anyway, might as well take advantage. And I figured, let's use a whole variety of different swords. So, uh, just reviewing, one of the oldest swords in my collection, this is a Wakzashi from Hanwei. It's a Practical Plus uh, Wakzashi. We have a um, Messer, uh, Gottfried Messer from Lansnecht Lanz Emporium. Um, we haven't seen too much of this. This is the um, British uh, Light Cavalry 1796 uh, Sabre from LK Chen. And then a bunch of Chinese swords, all from LK Chen. So we have the Yuan um, Dao from the Mongol period. Just before the Mongol period, from the Song Dynasty, we have a Han Dao. Then from later on in the Qing period, we have the New Wei Dao, or the Oxtail Saber. And then even though these are all single-edged swords, I figured we'd break it up a little bit. So these are two Jian. Um, we'll try one, but this one I specifically have in here to kind of calibrate it. And we'll probably start with this one. So this is the, um, the White Serpent Ming uh, Jian, but this particular sword of mine does not have an edge on it. So it comes down to a very fine, um, it's got good edge geometry, but it doesn't have a final apex, so it's not sharp. And one of these things we'll test, because of the nature of the cutting medium we have, the ability to propagate through the target is going to be, in large part, up to the sharpness. The rest of these swords are paper cutting sharp, and some are even beyond paper cutting sharp, so they're, they're uh, like shaving sharp. Uh, this particular one isn't, though, so even though it's got very good cross-sectional structure to it, it doesn't have the final edge to it. So will it be able to cut and break through the surface at all? We'll find out. We'll start with that one. And as long as the box has integrity, we'll keep going. We might be able to get more than one strike in. I know that if you keep on working with the box, it'll eventually fall apart, and then we won't be able to do any more testing. So initially, we'll probably just start with one strike each, and it won't be that scientific, but it should still give us some general idea on if a very wide blade like this Messer performs better than a kind of long and thin blade like the Mongol Dao, or does something short and stout like a Wakazashi do better? We'll find out. It'll be a, a learning experience for us all. We're going to be measuring the depth of the cut, of each cut down to the centimeter, but this isn't going to be super duper robust as far as its scientific ability. The box is reasonably homogenous. Um, but you can see there's some holes here, it's got some strips cut into it, I got rid of most of the tape, but there's still a few pieces that are stuck on it here. I'll do my best to avoid that. And last time I did a test like this, everyone was asking, um, how would a machete compare to a sword? So we're going to be including machete. This one is still paper cutting sharp. So, we'll start right off, we're gonna start right in the middle, and we'll see how Mr. Machete does. And I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to be performing these strikes as if I'm competing in a batado competition where I try and reach all the way to the ground. These are going to be what I would consider combat strikes. So as if I'm trying to take off a limb, for example. Okay, so Mr. Machete. Okay, 48 centimeters for machete. You can see that that uh, I had to get down pretty low in order to um, continue the strike. It went in pretty easy and there was a little bit of tearing. It didn't stay straight and I'm going with the grain in this direction and the further it goes off of true, the worse it gets. Next one. Next one is the Ming Jun and as I mentioned before, the Ming sword does not have a final edge on it. Does that make a difference? Let's find out.
Hmm. It still cuts mighty effective even without an edge. That uh, concerns me about how deep my target is. I debated whether I wanted to stand the box up on the edge and cut against the grain instead of with the grain. If I did that, I'd get much fewer strikes and it's a little difficult because the cardboard on the inside is not uniform if I cut that way. And I'd get probably only two or three strikes if I did that way. So I decided to stand it up. But um, yeah, it, uh, it obviously got a little bit of a reprieve here, but we're basically at the same distance. Let's measure an official tally. Okay, the white serpent comes in at 58 centimeters. Let's, uh, let's do the sharp gen and see if there's a difference. The Lung Chuan sword is significantly lighter than the Ming Jin, but it's sharper. Will that make a difference? I'm going to try and strike right about here and see if it can go straight down. <laughs> well, I ground my sword into the earth. That doesn't bode well for the rest of the test. I think that we're going to... Um, probably overshoot the target uh even and again i am not swinging for the fences here i am not intentionally striking as hard as i can um but that went all the way through the boxes and then buried here let's see if we can see it buried this much of the blade into the dirt okay so this sword went all the way through the box We'll try at least one more sword before we might have to call this off uh, on account of the target not being strong enough for the type of testing that we attempted to do. Okay, next up is the Hanwe Wakizashi. Now, you can see with that last cut, I just barely popped out of the target and into the ground uh, at the end there, and that's uh, a matter of geometry. You have your most reach when your sword is in line with your shoulder. So the higher you go up or the lower you go down, the less reach you have. And since the box goes all the way to the ground, if I stand straight up and I'm trying to hit a target all the way to the ground, the blade will naturally shorten, which means I need to get quite close to it or I need to adjust my swing and get cl my shoulder closer to the ground in order to be able to strike it. I don't have a table to lift the box up or anything like that to adjust my target. Just making do with what I have for the purposes of this experiment. So I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to do a strike from Seiza. I'm not going to perform any Ido, but um, I will perform a strike. This is a short blade, so I will try and get close and get a little low when I'm performing the strike. went pretty far. I fortunately didn't hit my ballast. I have a big, one of these big posts inside of the, the, uh, the box to keep it from falling over. So 62 centimeters for the wakizashi. So this portion is pretty chewed up. So I'm going to turn the box around and we'll have a whole fresh section. But on this side it reads, Wakizashi, 62 centimeters. Machete, uh, 48 centimeters. White Serpent, Unsharpened Jun, 58 centimeters. And then I'll just put um, Lan, Lan Chuan. Lan Chuan Jian, max. Do it over, it broke the box. Okay, I'm gonna flip it around and we'll we'll get a couple more strikes in. Next up, the British P1796 Light Cavalry Saber Troopers Edition Saber. Right down the middle. And yeah, I bottomed out with that one. I actually stuck struck a deep gouge out of the post in the bottom that I'll take a picture of later. <laughs> All right, time for the Chinese broadsword. This is the new way down. This one is sharp, but it's been one of my more well-used swords, so it's not 
as sharp as some of the other examples. Let's see if that makes a difference. Huh. I hit a piece of tape. I kind of want to do a different strike with, with that one just to give it another fair shake. I'm going to actually do my... I'm, gonna, I'm allowed one mulligan. I will do a do-over. Try the new way down one more time. other swords, which leads me to believe, again, at least part of this blade is not as sharp as it should be. So I, that's my fault, not the blade's fault, for not keeping it as sharp as it, it needs to be. 41 centimeters for the oxtail dao. Now the distant relative of the oxtail dao, this is the Song Han dao, and this one is very, very sharp. So does that make the difference? Even though it's not quite as maneuverable in the hand, it's a little slower. Will the sharpness make the, the difference? Let's find out. Yep. And that struck the post once again. So that once again got a maximum score. Max score for the Song Han Dao. And we'll end it with the much slimmer Mongol Dao. So this one, again, it has a very narrow cross-section. It's a lot longer and closer to military sabers, but it's quite sharp. And let's see if that seems to be the deciding factor with the other ones that have gone all the way through. They tend to be quite sharp swords. So let's see if this one uh, has similar great performance. Uh-oh, what happened? That one only went barely in, and then it stopped. Did I say I only get one mulligan? I get two mulligans. Hey, look at that. Oh, I see what's happening. The blade is so long, I'm striking the other side of the box because the center percussion is here and the blade is so long that I'm hitting the other box and digging in. Hmm. Uh, what can I do to remedy that? Is there a way to remedy that? I'll try a strike right here and I'll just have to cut a little further out and see if that, if I can do, if I can remedy that. Let's see. Well, that wasn't perfect, but at least it didn't cut through the other side. So I'm not able, I'm cutting a little bit further forward than the ideal place where you would strike with this sword intentionally because my target isn't deep enough. So I'm ending up trying to cut through two sections of the wall at a time, which is slowing down the blade. Um, but even so, even cutting through, you know, way out here in the, in the foible, um, it still cut reasonably well. It probably outcut the, uh, the unsharpened oxtail, so. So what are the takeaways? For this type of target, sharpness is vitally important, and not just any sharpness. Remember how I mentioned that the New Way Dao wasn't super sharp? It's still paper cutting sharp, decidedly. So the difference between this sharpness and the razor edge of some of the others, like the 1796 Light Cavalry Saber, the Longchuan Jian, the uh, Song Han Dao, which are dangerously sharp. This one, I don't mind putting my hand along the edge. I can feel the, the edge. It's got a little bit of meat, what would be called miku in Japanese, and it just starts to bite my skin. The others are sharp enough to the point that they're scary sharp. 
and that makes a tremendous difference on this particular type of target. Um, other other takeaways: the the machete did well. It obviously was outperformed by dedicated swords. The swords that weren't super sharp didn't really perform significantly better than the machete. So, if someone just wants something to to cut as as hard as possible, yes, a machete is obviously designed for that and can do okay. It uh, swords, especially these cutting types of swords. Um, can can perform at least as well as a machete and often way outperform them as we can see as this type of target can't <laughs> stand up to well-made swords that are uh, done in that style. Uh, the difference between a fast-moving long sword and a shorter moving broad sword is a little difficult to say. Again, this type of a target wasn't able to perhaps capture that particular um, difference in effect um, just because of the logistics of it, but uh, something something different and something interesting worth checking out. It would have been kind of interesting if the medium had been strong enough to catch even the more powerful strikes. Again, I was not striking that hard. I can hit significantly harder than this, and I probably could have gone all the way through the box if we wanted. So, at the end of the day, it was just a another fun test just to show what can and can't be done and uh, a good way, good reason for me to put, put away my box. So until next time today, it was just a, another fun test just to show what can and can't be done and uh, a good way, good reason for me to put, put away my box. So until next time guys.